Finally, I'm going to cover Mu0, the latest agent in the lineage of AlphaGo agents in this paper called Mastering Atari, Go, Chess, and Shogi by planning with a learn model. Uh, and again, that's the uh, DeepMind crew uh, that's been working on this uh, since 2014 or something. And uh, basically, um, uh, it'd be really helpful if you already watched my previous videos on AlphaGo, AlphaGo 0 and Alpha 0 because um, many of the details still apply here. So do watch those, I'll link it somewhere here. Um, okay, before I start digging into the paper, let me just quickly walk you through the, what happened with this lineage of agents. And the first thing that happened was um, AlphaGo uh, back in 2015 and uh, they developed this agent uh, which could solve the game of Go. But the trick was uh, it used a lot of human data. Uh, so um, the professional games played by Go players and uh, it had a lot of uh, Go specific heuristics integrated into the agent itself. And it also knew the rules of the game, obviously. And uh, then they had AlphaGo Zero, which basically uh, also uh, played Go and was even better than AlphaGo. But the trick was they didn't use any uh, human data. They were just using pure self-play reinforcement learning and uh, the algorithm, the agent learned how to play by itself and became the best player ever so far. Uh, the next step was doing the Alpha Zero, which uh, basically was a minor, let's say minor, probably a lot of engineering, but a minor conceptual change. So they had to prune a couple of more details from AlphaGo Zero in order to make it uh, general enough so that it can play not only Go, but also chess and Shogi, which is a, a so-called Japanese chess. And again, we didn't have any human data, but we did have the rules. And the latest agent in this lineage is Mu0, which is this paper. And basically, um, they just ditched the rules. And I'll explain in a minute what that means. And it can also play Atari games now. So the Atari 57 games in the Atari benchmark. So when they say they don't have the rules, what does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, well, basically that means that during the, so if you watch my previous videos, uh, you know what Monte Carlo tree search is. And basically what it means is that during the Monte Carlo tree search, you don't have the available simulator, so you don't know how to uh, give in some action. So starting from a root state, S0, given some action, you don't know what the next state here will be. Uh, you don't know how the exact layout of the boards will look like in the case of board games or in the case of Atari, you don't know what the next screen will look like. And uh, basically, uh, because you don't have the simulator, you'll have to learn uh, that dynamics model and we'll see, and that's the whole main paper, uh, the, the main idea of this paper is to learn the dynamics model and then subsequently use it in order to plan and in order to play all of these games. So let's see how they managed to pull it off. So they said here, we present the Mu0 algorithm which by combining a tree-based search, so again, Monte Carlo tree search with a learned model, that's the novelty, uh, achieves superhuman performance in a range of challenging and visually complex uh, domains without any knowledge of the underlying dynamics. So that's what I mentioned already. And you'll understand that as, the, as, as this video progresses. Uh, so when, evalu when evaluating on Go, Chess, and Shogi without any knowledge of the game rules, Mu0 matched the superhuman performance of the Alpha0 agent, so that's this one, uh, algorithm that was supplied with the game rules. And it also achieves state-of-the-art on the, this Atari uh, 57 uh, benchmark, and um, that's pretty awesome as well. Okay, so let's, let's dig into the algorithm uh, straight away. And I'll skip this part for now, and let's just explain how everything looks like in Mu0. Okay, so first let's understand the algorithm itself. Uh, first things first, the, um, the Mu0 agent uh, consists out of three parts. So the first part is um, the representation function, H. The second fu function is the prediction function, F, which will give us the policy and the value function. And finally, we'll have uh, something called G function, or the uh, dynamics function, and given the state and given the action, it will just output the next state and it will output the reward, okay? And this is what we're trying to learn here. So we don't have the simulator, the perfect simulator, we have this dynamics model which we're trying to learn. And so these three components together comprise the mu0 model, okay? So uh, this is the um, input state 
And uh, the thing is, because we have Atari, we have Go, Chess, and Shogi. Um, and uh, I'll just give you an example of how this thing looks like for Go and how it looks for Atari uh, as two representative cases. So for Go, this thing whoops, will look like this. So we'll have eight planes. Uh, and each plane will have 19 by 19 uh, resolution because that's how the Go board looks like. So this is going to be so 8. And the reason we have 8 is because in order to play Go, you need to have some past observations. Otherwise, you can't play the game. Okay, so for Atari, this is going to look like... Uh, so similarly, we'll have uh, 32 times 3 because we have RGB frames. So we'll have to encode 32 frames and... Uh, so this is going to look like this. And that's like, I think, 96 by 96 resolution. And we'll have additionally 32 planes uh, for the 32 previous actions. And that's also needed because uh, in order to play Atari, you just need those actions encoded. And uh, we just, we're just we just going to broadcast, for example, if the action was zero, you're just gonna uh, put a bias plane with all zeros uh, stacked here. If it was one, you're just gonna input uh, one over 18 because Atari has 18 actions. So that's how they encode the actions as just uh, constant bias planes uh, here. So once we have those uh, volumes, those represent the input states. And now we have the H function, which is a simple ResNet. So you'll just pass that volume into a ResNet and out comes uh, the hidden representation, the hidden uh, state. And it's going to look similarly, it's gonna have 256 planes and depending on whether we have Atari or whether we have um, Go or whatever, uh, for Atari it's going to be 6x6 resolution and for Go it's going to remain the same, so 19 by 19 because again the board has 19 by 19 uh, resolution. Okay, and uh, now we just apply Monte Carlo tree search in the following manner. We have the F function, which is the prediction function, which is also a convolutional neural network. And we just pass this uh, hidden state into it and out comes the policy. So the policy will be like uh, 361 uh, like uh, dimensional vector in the case of Go. And the value will just be the, the, the value function which uh, gives you the, uh, the, the expected reward uh, you'll get uh, going from this state to the end of the game. Uh, just basic reinforcement learning stuff. Um, so that's the uh, that part and using those uh, uh, priors, using those probabilities coming from the policy, that's going to be your prior in your Monte Carlo tree search, if you remember from the previous videos, and you're just going to uh, take the maximum P, uh, like a PUCT value, and you, for example, you took this branch, and once you have um, that action, you're you're going to pass it into the uh, this G function. So let's see how that functions. So again, I, example, uh, I explain we have this uh, hidden state, and it looks like this. So 256 there, and he, this is dependent on the on the game itself. So this is 256. And what we're going to do is uh, we are going to encode this action again uh, spatially. So uh, as I previously said, for example, for Atari, uh, you're just gonna add a bias plane here. And this is what what's going into the G function. And uh, out goes the, the next hidden state, which will again have 256 planes, and out goes the reward here. So just by doing this and doing the simulations through the Monte Carlo using this uh, G model, the, the dynamics model and the, the prediction and the representation models, you'll build up the Monte Carlo tree search. And then, uh, as you know, you just take the, the, the highest visitation count in the route, and that's your next action. And so as you can see here, you just pick the maximum visitation count action and you pass it to the environment. The environment gives you some reward and it gives you the next observation. So basically you'll just, in the case of say Go, uh, because those are eight, eight boards, you'll just pop the, the oldest one and you'll just append uh, the newest board uh, state that came from the environment. And that's your new input state. And then you just recursively repeat this until the end of the game. And then the environment tells you, okay, this is, uh, environment will just stop you. And what you'll do is you'll be saving those trajectories into this uh, centralized replay buffer where all of these 
actors are going to store uh, their experience. So uh, basically, MuZero uh, is a distributed agent. That means you have multiple actors. So all of these are maybe separate threads. And they'll be executing this thing here. They'll be collecting experience. They'll be saving stuff like this thing, like the, the policy coming, the refined policy from the Monte Carlo tree search and rewards and states. Uh, they'll be saving those uh, tuples here. And later you can use those to train this thing. Now, there is one thing that may confuse you and that's how this thing, how does this thing play without any rules? And the answer is, like the partial answer, and we'll dig into it a bit later, is basically uh, only in this root state you can query the environment and ask what the valid actions are. So uh, as you can imagine, for, for example, in the case of Go, you have 361 branches here and not every single one is going to be legal. So once you communicate with the environment, it tells you maybe these actions here are invalid. That means you'll just pull the priors, the probabilities to zero, and you'll take that uh, probability mass and you'll just uh, proportionally distribute it across all of the other branches. And uh, so doing that, uh, you'll basically be building the Monte Carlo tree search where the root node will kind of constrain you, uh, constrain your space, but all of the other nodes here, like all of these, they'll have all of the 361 actions available in the case of Go. And uh, that means um, you you may play some, in, initially you'll be playing maybe some impossible games, illegal games, but that doesn't matter. Eventually uh, during training, the, 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 the model will learn how to uh, basically do the correct steps. It will learn the rules of the game, basically. Okay, uh, before explaining the actual uh, training procedure, let me just further clarify and uh, how this, how, how it works without any rules. And that's the part that bugged me a lot initially. So let me try and explain you. So first of all, specifically AlphaGo Zero and Alpha Zero use knowledge of the rules of the game in three places. So state transitions in the search tree, actions available at each node of the search tree and episode termination within the search tree. So there are three parts to understanding how this thing works without any rules. First things first, this one. So. Alpha Zero had access to a perfect simulator of the true dynamics process. So this is how the thing looks like. You basically have, um, so this is the root of the Monte Carlo tree search. So this is your initial state. Uh, you start building the Monte Carlo tree search like this. And what's the difference? Well, I already explained how the input state looks like. So in the case of Go, you have the eight planes, 19 by 19 special res spatial resolution. And once you take some action in the Monte Carlo tree search, what you'll end up here is, um, Again, the basically the input observations and not some uninterpretable um, uh, hidden state like in the case of Mu Zero. So you'll end up here with again with some eight planes, uh, and you'll have 19 by 19 uh, basically uh, boards, and that's that's here. And again, once you play some other action here, a prime. Again, here you'll have the interpretable result. Because you have the rules, because you have the simulator, uh, you can do that. In the case of Mu0, you don't have that. So here you'll have, instead of eight, you'll have those 256 planes, and you don't have any interpretation of that uh, like hidden volume. There's just some state that the uh, Mu0 learns how to build up uh, so that you can predict the policy, the value, and the rewards. So that's what I want you to understand. That's the first thing. The second part is, and I already kind of explained this, Muser only masks legal actions at the root of the search tree where the environment can be queried, but does not perform any masking within the search tree itself. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, in the case of Go, again, you have 361 actions going from the root node. You'll mask some of those out because you can query the environment. And that means maybe you mask some portion here and you'll, you'll have this part available for simulations. And you'll be building the tree. But the thing is, all of the other nodes here will have all of the actions available because you, ha you don't have the simulator. And so that's the second part. And the third part is the terminal nodes. So inside the tree, the search can proceed past a terminal node. In this case, the network is expected to always predict the same value. This is achieved by treating terminal states as absorbing states during training. So what they say here is the following. So because once you have the simulator, once you uh, uh, arrive at a certain state, the terminal state, the simulator would just tell you, hey, this is the terminal state. You, you can uh, take the reward. You just back, prop that, uh, back up the reward up the Monte Carlo tree search, and that's it. That's what we've, what we've done in AlphaGo, in AlphaGo 0, and AlphaZero. Here, 
you can actually go past this state because you don't know that it's a terminal state. And that's kind of a problem. And uh, they mentioned here that somehow, and I don't understand this part really well, like it's kind of confusing. They didn't, uh, they didn't uh, explain it really well in the paper, uh, how, how they enforce that the value function always predicts the same uh, value. Yeah, so if you maybe know the answer, just comment down below. But for now, we can just treat it as a black box and uh, continue with this video. Uh, let me just now explain you the, the training procedure itself. Okay, so we've been saving these uh, experience replays into the replay buffer. And now what we do is we sample one of the real sequences. So this is one of the real sequences we've stored. And you can see the input states and you can see some actions. And what we do is we take one state. So the first state, we pass it into our representation functions of the ResNet and we get some uh, hidden state here. Okay, what we do is we uh, pass it into the, the, the prediction model, we get the policy, we get the value. Then we uh, basically take this action that we have from the replay buffer and we concatenate it spatially again with the hidden representation and uh, we pass it into the G function, the, the dynamics model and out comes the reward and out comes the next state. We repeat the process again. So we uh, pass it through the prediction function, we get the policy, we get the value, we take the action again, we concatenate it with the hidden state, we pass it into the G, the dynamics model, and again we get uh, the hidden state, etc, etc. So basically, um, they've, they've been using these, uh, and they say it somewhere here. Um, so in each case, we train mu0 for k5 hypothetical steps. So that means they'll have, even though you can see only three here, they basically in practice use five of these steps. And um, now once you have this, uh, this is how you train the thing. So you make sure that this policy here is the same as this one. And you store, you st you've stored this one in the replay buffer so you can use it as the target and just apply a simple cross entropy loss. So you, minimi you minimize the KL divergence, you make those two the same and uh, that's one component of the loss. The second component, you wanna make sure the value function uh, uh, becomes as close as possible to the uh, outcome of the game. So in the case of Go, uh, the game will, after you roll this out, at the end you'll either win and get plus one, you'll have a tie so zero, or you'll lose, that's minus one. And you'll make you'll make sure to, and let's just uh, kind of uh, denote this as Z, and you'll just wanna make sure that V minus Z squared gets to zero, and that's simple mean square error uh, uh, loss. And finally, you do the same thing for rewards, except that uh, in board games such as Go, uh, because the rewards are always zero until the very end, you actually won't be using this component so that th this thing will be used for Atari where you have rewards along the way. Uh, but just remember there's the third component and that's pretty much it. There, there is some regularization of the parameters and um, that's pretty much it. So as you can see, uh, by, doing, by putting the loss here and here, you'll be modifying and this is some, uh, as you can see, recurrent process. So whatever came here is gonna influence the values here. So this, you can treat this as a role, like the recurrent neural network, even though they are not using recurrent neural network here. Uh, basically, they'll be tweaking all of these parameters, the parameters of the, the, the dynamics model, the parameters of the uh, prediction functions, and the parameters of H, the, rep uh, the rep representation function, to learn this model. And eventually, uh, you'll have a pretty decent uh, dynamics model, which basically now contains the rules of the game. And that's awesome. Um, so the, 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 the part that's maybe confusing is, it, as you can see here, what keeps this, this hidden state, which doesn't have any interpretation, um, correlated to this input real state that we sample from the replay buffer is exactly the loss. So by making sure that the, uh, by making sure that the prediction function from this state gives you valid policy and value, uh, eventually this state will have something to do with this state, even though they didn't um, enforce any constraints upon this hidden state. So you can't reconstruct the actual observations going from this state. That's not how they train it. And yet it works because the only the only thing we want to encode into this is we want to be sure we, we want to make sure that we can actually uh, get the policy get the value and get the reward from these states and that's 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 it and they mentioned that here so at every one of these steps the model predicts the policy the value function and the immediate reward 
the model is trained end-to-end -end with the sole objective of accurately estimating these three important quantities, so as to match the improved estimates of policy coming from the Monte Carlo tree search and value generated by search as well as the observed reward. There is no direct constraint or requirement for the hidden state to capture all information necessary to reconstruct the original observation, so you can go from the hidden state to the actual input observations and that's not needed because we only care about the three quantities. Finally, instead the hidden states are free to represent state in whatever way is relevant to predicting the current and future values and policies. Intuitively, the agent can invent internally the rules of dynamics that lead to most accurate planning. And that's what's so awesome about Mu0. Basically, um, by doing this process here, you learn this model and it just works. They say here again, no semantics attached to the state, you just predict these and it's just solved all by itself. Uh, here is the um, just the loss function. Again, basically, uh, this is the cross entropy I mentioned. So this is your pol the raw policy. This is the Monte Carlo policy. You want to make sure those are the same. Uh, just a simple um, like a mean square error here for the value function and for the reward. You also do MSC between the reward you got and between your output from your uh, dynamics model G. Finally, the regularization, so theta just comprises out of theta F plus theta H, and finally you have theta G. That's the mu zero model. And you just do L2 regularization, that's the final loss. You have five hypothetical steps, you just train it on the bunch of trajectories, and uh, we can see now the results. Uh, let me show you this. Basically, uh, comparing uh, mu0 on chess, so this is y-axis is the ELO score, number of training steps, you can see that this is probably Stockfish, so it got better, better than Stockfish at one point of time. Then we have for Shogi, similar, and finally the, the game of Go. Here you can see it gets better than uh, Alpha0, and uh, finally on Atari, uh, they took something called RTD2 agent, and this is the, the, the mean value, this is the median, and you can see that the mu0 achieves a higher median and mean scores than the state of the art, uh, so that's awesome. Now, uh, there is one, one catch here, and that's that uh, actually on, on some of the tough games like, uh, like uh, Montezuma's Revenge and Pitfall and Solaris, etc., uh, you'll have zero score pretty much with mu0. So if you take a look at the distribution across all of the 57 games, so this is, these are the 57 games here, it will have like a really high score for some games and then we'll just dip here. And for the last like five or seven games, the score is gonna be really low, uh, but y you can't um, uh, catch that using just these two statistics like mean and median. You need to show the fifth percentile, etc. So uh, like an agent called Agent 57 later uh, solved this thing and um, achieved much better results here, but you actually had lower results here. So it's a more general agent, but it still had a lower mean and me median scores than mu0. Okay, so those are some results, um, and I mentioned it here. And now let me just show you uh, some more results. Uh, uh, basically, this is for when you have a bunch of data, like 20 billion frames, you can see mu0 achieves much better results than R2D2. Uh, Apex is also some distributed agent. And when they use uh, 10x less data, and uh, something called mu0 reanalyze, which learns how to uh, uh, better, uh, basically has be better data efficiency because it can uh, reuse some of the uh, trajectories from the replay buffer and uh, train multiple times on those trajectories uh, by using the freshest weights. Uh, and they show that they, they get much better data efficiency. Again, the scores are lower, but it still uh, achieves state of the art with less data. And that's awesome. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there is a couple more things I want to mention, and that's here. So, uh, for the game of Go, uh, basically after training uh, the agent with uh, 800 simulations for every single uh, Monte Carlo tree search, so when you do those rollouts, you use 800 simulations, and that takes around 0.1 seconds. And they can sh they can show that by using more, uh, by giving the the agent uh, in the ev evaluation, uh, by giving it more search time, so more simulations, uh, it it uh, achieves much better ELO, which means it generalizes to to search trees that it hasn't encountered during the training, and that's awesome. You can see that uh, it it until like 
two orders of magnitude, uh, it still has pretty decent uh, increase in yellow score. Uh, the same thing doesn't apply for Atari, uh, because Atari, uh, they speculate that the dynamics model, the G model, is harder to learn there, uh, so you can imagine why, because you have to kind of understand how to transition the frames, which are it's tougher problem than than analyzing the the like the board states uh, and basically they train it for with 50 simulations and you can see it does improve until 100 but then it just kind of uh, flattens and just start slowly starts to actually uh, go down so yeah so Atari is a bit different uh, here nothing interesting basically the more simulations the better results as we can expect uh, that's that's pretty much it. Let me just see whether there is something more interesting to, to tell you here. Yeah, there is a small difference in the uh, search algorithm because now we have rewards along the way and not just on the term in the terminal states like in the case of board games. And because of that, they had to introduce this, uh, as you can see, this this notion of, of this uh, um, cumulative reward. And they say here the backup is generalized to the case where the environment can emit intermediate rewards, have a discount gamma different from one and the value estimates are unbounded. Uh, and basically now once you, uh, as you can see here, th this is familiar. So your uh, visitation count and your, uh, this is the, the, the action value function. Uh, the, the way you're now updating it is by adding this uh, G uh, estimate. And uh, that's just a sum of discount rewards plus the bootstrapped uh, value here. So yeah. So in, in the case of uh, board games, these would all be zero pretty much and you'll just have the bootstrap from the leaf node and you'd propagate that one up the up the up the tree so you would do the the you'd backed up those values but here you you have all of these uh, in case of atari um, that also has some consequences that we have to now normalize the uh the q values um because um as I said, rewards are, you have intermediate rewards, we can, which can be unbounded, so you have to do this normalization in order to uh, have this thing interact really well with the other part of the PUCT algorithm. So basically you have, as you remember, you have the Q, and you have this prior times, times the visitations. So the more you visit something, th this will get uh, higher, so this will get lower. And basically, finally, you'll just rely on the Q value. So you wanna make sure that this is of similar uh, scale as this thing, so you just have the normalization by uh, saving the max and min uh, Q values throughout the Monte Carlo tree search. You'll be logging that statistic and you can use it here to normalize your Q. So just a couple of technical details, but hopefully you got the gist of the algorithm. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, basically it achieved really good scores. So again, it'd be really nice if, in my opinion, if if we could have uh, the, 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 the scores be uh, as close, uh, like even better than Agent 57, that would be really impressive. Uh, but yeah. Uh, those games require long-term planning, and um, Mu Zero just couldn't solve it uh, with this approach. Maybe that's the forward, like future research direction. Um, that's it. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, leave a like, subscribe, share, and see you in the next video.